the Barely News Crew, and I'm your host here as always, Alexis, and today we bring you a very special video on the Barely News Crew. We have done so many movie reviews this year, it's only fitting that this is the end of the year. I am now going to present my official top 10 favorite movies of 2015. Now just to be clear, this is not my official ranking of the absolute best movies of this year. These are the 10 movies that I would consider the ones that I have liked the most of this year, okay? At number 10, we have the latest from Robert Zemeckis, The Walk. Now this movie is very flawed and the very first part of it is very iffy. I am in love with the visuals and just the, the story itself that it was trying to tell was absolutely beautiful. And speaking of beautiful, The Good Dinosaur is my number nine film. Now this is not a great movie by any means, I will admit that. But it is still noteworthy because of the photorealistic animation. Let's be clear here, Pixar never drops the ball when it comes to driving home emotions. Now, there is a film that we'll get to later on about emotions, but as far as this movie in particular, I will just say there are all kinds of feels you will feel in this, if that makes any sense. At number eight, we have Marvel's Ant-Man. Now this has to be, for me anyway, the funniest <laughs> movie of the year. I wasn't expecting it to be so humorous. I trust Marvel to handle whatever property they do, and I think it's time now everyone knows this, that they can do anything. They made Guardians of the Galaxy great, they made this thing a blast. It was just a great and memorable movie experience. As well as my number seven, which is Kingsman The Secret Service, which I will say was the surprise hit of the year. This movie, I just was baffled by how good it actually was. From beginning to middle to end, great structured film, great entertainment. Taron Edgerton is a star in the making and just um, pretty memorable performances by Colin Fur and Samuel L. Jackson. I'll just say that. At my number six is Mad Max Fury Road, which is the fourth movie in the Mad Max franchise and also directed by George Miller. Absolutely disgusted reviled and repulsed by a lot of the things and that was actually a good thing this movie is pretty damn amazing it is a simple story yes you see a car chase back and forth that's the movie but it's not really about that it's about the characters that you're invested with and furiosa is now a household name that just goes to tell you this movie is really sticking in people's minds and it's really a great film. Not my personal favorite, but still a pretty great film. At number five, we have the latest from Ridley Scott, which is The Martian. When I saw the trailers, I was hoping it was gonna be a good movie, but I didn't think it would be this good and it's a pretty great movie. I really feel this is an important movie for everyone to go out and see in the theater. It's just an important story. Matt Damon absolutely blows it away, one of his most memorable performances. And this movie has just gorgeous visuals that you wouldn't expect. Just go see this movie at my number five. Number four comes from my favorite director, Steven Spielberg and Bridge of Spies. Now this is a spy movie, a, a Cold War spy thriller. And you feel as if this movie was made in the 1950s although it wasn't, and the strange thing about this movie is that you feel like it, it also fits our time today. It's very relevant. I love these type of movies, and the way Spielberg crafted this film together is absolutely sublime. And Tom Hanks always, always is amazing. At number three, I have Inside Out. Oh my goodness, what a movie. Everyone needs to see Inside Out because of just how grand it is on a small scale, I'll give you. But the emotions that you experience when watching this film is truly one of a kind. It's just one of the most ingenious films that have ever been made, period. At number two, I have Avengers Age of Ultron. Now, I hear what you're all saying, and I don't care. I don't appreciate how very unappreciated this movie has been. Yes, it's not the first Avengers. The first Avengers can't be replicated, but I like this movie more because of the improved chemistry, the improved dialogue, maybe the improved action sequences. A lot of things are actually done a lot better in this movie, and I love it more. I'm not saying it's better than the first Avengers, but I really feel that a lot of people give this movie a bad rap when really it's a damn good movie. And I think you all know what my number one will be. Star Wars Episode 7 The Force Awakens, a movie that I've been waiting for for 10 years. Yeah, or maybe a uh, hundred. This movie is not only a great Star Wars movie, it is a great film. J.J. Abrams absolutely delivers. There are flaws with it, of course, but there are flaws with almost every single film, almost every single Star Wars movie. And it has that Star Wars feel. It has that magic. 
great likable characters, an amazing story that bridges the next generation of Star Wars fans. This movie succeeded on so many levels and it only feels justice that I will say right now, this movie will be a contender for Best Picture and many other Academy Awards. Anywhere between 6 to 11, I will predict this right now. Anyway, you guys, that's my favorite top 10 movies of the year. If you have any movies that you thought I missed out or didn't get right, please let me know and comment down below for more Barely News Crew videos. I want to thank every single last one of you for watching, and we'll see you in 2016 with more movie reviews here on the BNC. Thank you, guys. I'm your host here as always, Alexis. And remember, you're always welcome to the place for all things movie news and reviews. Bye-bye.